What's going on guys, Etika from the Etika World Network here and E3 is right around the corner so obviously now is the time to get hype, right? But there's just been a couple of dampeners, at least to me, maybe some other people share those sentiments, but a couple of dampeners that have made it so this year's E3 is not as up and at em, although there are still titles that I'm extremely excited about, let's not get that wrong, you know? We have Watch Dogs 2, which recently got revealed to us that I'm super amped for, we also have Titanfall 2, we have um, we have The Last Guardian on Sony's end, so you know, big, big titles, and plus Titanfall 2 being for multiple platforms, that's a, that's a great in its own, but something strange happened a little bit earlier today and it's in regards to Sony. They announced and confirmed that they're actually working on a brand new PS4, but it's not going to make an appearance in any way at E3. So it's like you have this massive you're kind of like taking the same step as Nintendo in the sense that you have this massive announcement and you know the gun show was meant for you to bring out your biggest guns, but you don't bring your main stage gun to the gun show. E3 is the gun show, my man, but Maybe there's some reasoning about this that I haven't caught on to yet. Either way, we have the article from Kotaku, and I know everyone is really opinionated about Kotaku, but I feel like articles in this context, they're actually really informative about. Let's see exactly what the basis of this announcement, because they, 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 all the rumors were true then. Sony really is working on a PlayStation Neo, PlayStation 4K, whatever next-gen title this one will have. It's, it's in development, but why aren't we seeing it at the stage for gaming all across the world. Let's see what's going on. So Sony has finally acknowledged that it is indeed building a more, and by the way, you'll catch all this in the description. You all fucking know that already. I don't think I have to repeat it the million times that I always do in these videos. But Sony has finally acknowledged that it is indeed building a more powerful version of the PlayStation 4 as Kotaku first reported in March. PlayStation chief Andrew House told the Financial Times that the codenamed Neo is intended to sit alongside and complement the standard PS4. Bullshit! They ain't complimenting shit! It's replacing it, motherfucker! Okay, they're doing their best to try to damage control this as long as possible. You ain't complimenting nothing, nigga! That shit is fucking replacing the PS4. You're gonna have better versions of games that are currently available on the PS4. When they release, they might be two versions of the guy. Come on, dude. Don't bullshit us, man. Just be real, okay? Anyways and that we will be selling both versions through the life cycle. The console will not be shown at E3. The FT reports, and this is the Financial Times, they report that the system will support 4K resolutions, but was otherwise devoid of specs. It's gotta be fucking beefy if it's supporting 4K, unless it's doing it at 20 frames a second. Guys, just letting you know, 4K is a fucking monstrous file size, and just recording 4K video, five minutes will be like five gigabytes big. That's, that's massive, so... With that in mind, this console has to be the most powerful spec console ever created, which usually all the next-gen ones are, but this is an ex this is, has to be exceptionally powerful, all right? The system will support 4K resolution, and it doesn't say 4K gameplay, though. It just says 4K resolution, so maybe it'll support your home screen being in 4K, but the actual games themselves aren't going to be running at 4K. I don't think we're anywhere near gaming in 4K at 60 frames a second, or even a usable 30 frames a second, guys. But House predicted that all games will support the standard PS4, and we anticipate all or a very large majority of games will also support the high-end PS4. No examples were given of the kind of performance boost gamers who upgrade to the new unit can expect. So they're trying to pull a whole Nintendo with the 3DS and the new 3DS kind of thing, but will that work for such a large install base as the PS4? Will it, will it be able to sit well with the gamers? This is yet to be seen, man, but already there are a lot of people who are giving some really heavily opinionated thoughts and opinions, well, heavily opinionated opinions on this whole thing. But okay, let's see here. So, in, in April, Giant Bomb published a specs comparison for what it said was documentation for the new system. So on the original CPU on the PS4, 8 Jaguar cores at 1.6 gigahertz, and you're gonna have basically the same thing, same amount of cores, but you know, slightly amped up a little bit more. They're gonna be overclocked a bit more, well, maybe not overclocked, I mean, hell no. I don't think a little fucking console can support overclocking, but if you're running games of 4K, I don't see any other way how it can happen. This fucking high-end PCs with SLI graphics card, 980 Ti's, that can barely run 4K at usable fucking frame. So I mean, being real, a console ain't gonna be able to do it unless you have some kind of magic or you sold your soul to the fucking devil himself to get the console to run at 4K with gaming. The GPU gonna be AMD, 18 CUs at 800 megahertz, so okay. And then for the new and improved one, it's gonna also be an AMD card. Most of them are using AMD now. And it's going to be clocked in at 900 and 911 megahertz, all right. So, okay, we're seeing improvement, but to me, this doesn't look like, okay, let's look at the last one. 
the memory, eight gigabytes, and it's gonna be the same because memory, I mean, you don't really need to upgrade that too much. That won't impact the gaming performance on it as much since multitasking is, I don't think multitasking is really too complex on things like game consoles because you're not gonna be able to run two games at one time or whatever. But we also have, but mainly it's good enough for what it can do. Downloads in the background, internet browser while you're playing the game, having the game pause whenever you go to the home screen, stuff like that, eight gigabytes is plenty. And the, the, it's basically going to be close to the same thing. Um, GD, um, GDDR5, um, I don't know exactly what the, okay, so 17 gigabits per second? I'm not sure exactly what that spec is. Please let me know in the comments. I'm a little bit hazy when it comes to this thing, even though I built my own PC. But if we're looking at these specs right now, we're saying that, let's say this is the true and blue certified 100% guaranteed specs of the PlayStation 4K, the PlayStation Neo, whatever it's going to be called. It's Project Neo, but I guess we'll just call it Neo from now on. This does not look like uh, it, this does not look like a hardware boost capable of running 4K games. I, I'm, I'm telling you that right now. There's no way in hell. I mean, there's no way. So when they say 4K resolutions, we have to make sure that we keep in mind that they not say nothing about no games. But it does look. I mean, is it significantly more powerful? Mm, but it does look like it might just be capable of running games at a solid 1080p 60 frames per second now um, for the PlayStation 4 graphics and the quality and the fidelity and the, you know, the stuff that we still want at 60 frames 1080p, perhaps. House also told the paper that both the PS4 and the 4.5 slash Neo will support the upcoming PlayStation VR headset, so this is a plus. He's not saying that the PS4 is totally going to be devoid of it, but you'll be able to game in VR on the PS4 too. And I know so many people right now are saying that virtual reality is a gimmick, but take it from someone who went to Rooster Teeth headquarters, I was chilling with Achievement Hunters, those fuck the legendary niggas themselves, I was playing the fucking HTC Vive with my boy Shofu, and I can tell you right now, there is nothing gimmicky about that. That is a style of gameplay that I want to throw myself in ASAP. I'm counting my pennies right now trying to figure out if it's possible for me to buy this thing anytime soon. But it's expensive, $800. So right now, it's not really all that accessible. But I've tried it. I've seen the light. Your boy got a fucking... God sake, my friend let us borrow the goddamn Oculus Rift DK2 again because it was so damn fun. I mean, VR, dude. I'm being serious with you, man. If you want to know Etika's opinion, it's the way. It's the future. And something that is a game changer to VR right now, do you guys know how the HTC Vive has those two hands? Well, I shouldn't call them hands, but controllers, I suppose, that you're able to use to interact with the virtual world? Game changer! Oh my god, man. Dude, when I was chilling with show, oh my god, we were shooting zombies, we were slicing heads off, we were catching bodies in the virtual world, you were able to change the guns, pull out the Uzi, the clip, go to ammunite, pull out the fucking Tech 9, man, that shit was fucking insane, dude. So yeah, this is great to see. PS4 will support the um, PlayStation VR headset. Will it be able to use the headset as efficiently or as smoothly or as good looking as the PlayStation 4.5 slash Neo slash Big Dick? Who knows? It's still unknown when Sony plans to start selling the more advanced unit. House did tell the Financial Times that it will cost more than the current PS4. You bet your fucking ass it will. But it is unclear if that means it'll retail for more than 350 the PS4's current price, or if it will simply be more expensive than whatever the PS4 costs when the new unit is launched. So they're very they're, they're careful with their wording here, man. They don't want to set people up to be disappointed down the line. But currently, I think we can expect the 4.5. I'm going to give it a ballpark price of $500, man. Or maybe even six. I, I don't know, dude. Right now, we see an improved spec list. But there may be other features that make the 4.5 that much greater than their original PS4 that could push the price even into further bounds. Is it possible that Sony will release a console that costs $600 once again? But will that actually be warranted in what the console itself can do? The features have to be immense on that thing, and it has to come with some things as well, too. Maybe they'll also have a PlayStation slash um, DualShock 4 Elite. That would be worth spending, I think, if you're going to get it all in an inclusive bundle. Maybe they'll throw some games in there as well, too. But if it was $600, then good lord almighty, you better make sure that that $600 is worth our money. So maybe they're taking this time not showing the console at E3 to potentially make sure that all of the features, everything that the console has to offer are all fully, just, just, just all in the front. Make sure that the consumers are able to see why it's worth getting another PS4, okay? Because you're making it, so therefore you must see a need for it. Now show us why we need it, you know what I mean? 
Sony going on the record about the new console today was likely an intentional move to lower expectations about it being announced on Monday during Sony's E3 briefing. You're goddamn right. There's nothing as scary as the internet scorn. It used to be woman scorn, but now they've taken second to the internet. You don't want the internet angry at you, and you don't want them having expectations that are totally unmet, because they will go in on your ass. We've seen what they did to the Call of Duty trailer. We've seen what they did to Mighty Number no. 9. We've seen what they did to the Watch Dogs True trailer. All right? Well, maybe, maybe not the trailer, but the teaser. So, good move, Sony. You know what? As much as I'm disappointed that we're not going to get those big bombshell uh, topics at E3, the ones that everyone's been sitting on their hands for, like the PlayStation Neo, slash 4.5, slash Big Dick, we're not going to be seeing the Nintendo NX, but it's all good. At least we're fully aware of this, and while we may be disappointed now, this is way better than having us get excited for it potentially being shown and nothing happening. People would have flipped their lids, although there's still plenty of things at E3 that can get a whole bunch of people excited, but maybe just a little bit less of this year than last. We also reported that Microsoft is developing some new Xbox One, Xbox Ones, a smaller unit set for release this year, and a more powerful Scorpio unit that will be competitive with the Neo. Microsoft's E3 briefing is also on Monday, giving them the chance to talk about the new hardware if they so choose. So at this point now, Nintendo's given E3 away when it comes to their new console. Sony's been given E3 away when it comes to their new console. So now it all sits in Microsoft's ballpark. A company that we originally speculated would not be doing any more new consoles due to their shift of the PC being a massive focus on the games and the first party games for the, you know, the, the few that are out there for Microsoft. So now, hey, maybe this Scorpio thing is going to blow us all away, but either way, it's the only thing that has the show floor now, unless we get a report from Microsoft within the next few days that it's not going to make an appearance either. This is all in the air, guys, but what do you think about Sony announcing this whole 4.5 4 thing with the PlayStation 4, confirming it's real, and then saying it ain't going to be shown? I want to know what you guys have to think about this. I'm glad that they made this move. I'm disappointed, but I'm excited for later on this year. Holiday season 2016 is going to be insane because by then we have to get NX information. We have to get 4.5 information. And 2017 is going to be the year of lit niggas. We're going to have Pokemon. We're going to have the NX. So, hey, whatever the case may be for now, we all know that it's going to be worth the wait later on. And plus, not to mention, Oculus is going to finally have their Touch VR implemented with the headset, so that might actually make it a game changer. Because I've, I've been looking at a lot about the Oculus and the HTC Vive, and those two, I'm really excited about VR, but I've been trying to figure out which one I want to get. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of a toss up until we have all the features of the Oculus revealed to us. But hey, I'm going off topic. I'll talk to you guys later on. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.